to have you here. Mm. Let, me, let me just pray. Um, we are so grateful to you, our Father who is in heaven, mm. that um, when we are here, you are with us. And when we are there, you are there with us. And so we thank you that you are with us, mm. wherever we are, whether here or there. And that means that whether our lives are in a good place or our lives are in a not good place, you are there with us. And uh, we want to come to you today and remember those who suffer in our world there and pray that they would know your incredible presence with them in that place that they're in now. We pray for you to minister into the brokenness of humanity, mm. that your incredible love revealed would be made known to those people who are there. And we pray, Father, that your presence would delight himself to be with us here in this place. So as we speak your word and hear your word mm. and have your word revealed to our hearts in our soul and in our spirit, we would be incredibly resourced with stuff from heaven that would deal with the stuff on earth. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the word of God really, it's not working. Uh, the, the word of God is uh, an incredible thing and it brings to us uh, a wonderful sense of um, newness. And it was wonderful just to listen to Sal last week. And I hope you all watched the video on yeah. YouTube or on the uh, link or on the Facebook page or, you know, there's so many things we can get from now. Uh, because it was such a blessing just to uh, be encouraged by that word. And uh, we're in uh, Esther mm -hmm. chapter 8 today. Uh, and we've heard the word read. And now I'm going to pick it open. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to do that. So King Ahasuerus, as I call him, uh, King Ahasuerus uh, gave Esther charge over Haman's house and possessions. Now, if you're Haman and part of the family of Haman, that's not good news for you because he was his arch enemy in so many ways. And when your enemy accomplishes, as it were, uh, his victory over you, uh, that's not a good feeling to feel, is it? Is there anyone out there breathing this morning? Yeah. <laughs> that's not a good feeling, is it? No. When your enemy rises up against you and takes its stand against you and you feel like your enemy has defeated you and taken away all of your possessions from you, that's not a good feeling, is it? No. no. And Haman must, and family and household must have felt incredibly uh, overwhelmed by this sense of loss uh, and impact that's been put upon their lives. And the guy that succeeds the whole journey is Mordecai. And you know, uh, when God honours us, that's one thing. When we get honoured by man, that's another thing. And I want to say to you as a Christian, I would rather be honoured by God than be honoured by man. And anybody Amen. want to join me? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, yeah, come on. I want him to say to me, Paul, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter yeah. into the joy of your rest. Yeah? yeah. Don't, don't we want to hear yeah. that? Yeah. It's wonderful when we heard Debbie the other day say uh, that the Lord spoke to her and said to her, you're a faithful mother. And then he got all the mothers to declare. She got all the mothers to declare. We're faithful mothers. And you know, the faithfulness uh, is a very precious commodity in the heart of the Father. He wants his people to be faithful. And he could have commended us with anything on our entry into heaven. This is nothing about us right now. But is it, he could have said anything to us. But he chose to use the word, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy. And so there is a sense in which faithfulness is precious to God. And you know what? Deep down inside the, the heart of the human, faithfulness is important to us too. Mm -hmm. Still is. Mm -hmm. Despite all the decay that's going on around us, despite all the morality of d diminishing uh, you know, precious qualities of heaven and 
God looking like stuff, the fact is that faithfulness still is precious to us because you can't build without faithfulness. Anybody want to say amen? Amen. amen? amen. That just helps me to get on track. <laughs> <laughs> so I would rather be honoured by God than by man. So all that belonged to Haman became Esther's. Haman's family were evicted, cast out, set aside. I had a reading in the red, I think it was in the week. And I said, he was cast out into the darkness in Matthew 8 verse 12. Cast out, like pushed foot to the furthest of the place that is light, away from the light, the furthest dark, cast out. All the enemies of God, all the enemies of God will be defeated by God. Because all the enemies of God will lose their fight against God. Anybody believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure you do. Anybody believe that? Yeah. Yes. Because if we don't believe that, then we have already lost. Because everything that we've been given has been given to us by a promise. And the Bible teaches us that God is the victor over all enemies. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So there is no one higher, no one mightier, no one more capable than our God. When they cast their crowns before him, all kings of the earth, and they will exalt him and they will bow down to him and they will say, Lord of lords and King of kings. Jesus is that one. You could have said hallelujah. <laughs> you may even have said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Anoint me with anointing, Lord. <laughs> now finally Esther, she comes clean. She tells King Ahasuerus, that she is from the nation of Israel, that she is a Jew. Now you have to ask the question, why did she not do so before? Why did she not do so before? Well, we read before, Mordecai told her, don't tell them what nation that you belong to. And Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7 tells us, there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. And there is. Sometimes the best way to win the war is to say nothing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I got one going, Lord. Because. Yeah. We got one going. Someone's alive. Oh. Don't we love Jesus? Amen. She tells him, but Mordecai had told her, and Ecclesiastes said there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. <laughs> and I'm so pleased that you've learned that lesson. <laughs> had she told him before, maybe the king would not have been so reckless as it relates to his delega delegation of power and authority that he had given to Amon. To act in the name of the king in the way that he chose to act. He may have rejected Haman's suggestion to kill and destroy the Jews. Had she have told him that she was a Jew, maybe he would have been mindful and maybe he would have held back. But she didn't, and so he didn't. So there is a time to be silent, and there is a time to speak. When the king gave to Haman, the ring, he was abandoning his leadership responsibility to rule and to reign in the land. He was more interested in banqueting and enjoying the fruits of his position than taking responsibility of the land. The land to rule and to reign. Because the king's responsibility is to take care, in his case, of the 127 provinces. But he just gave it away. He gave up his authority. And you know what? There are many fathers and there are many mothers and there are many politicians and there are many doctors and there are many different types of people giving up their authority mm. and giving away their responsibility. 
you know, the teachers, they're going to school and they're teaching the children, mm. but they're all demoralised mm. and they're just managing their way through. And doctors are going to the hospitals, but they're just doing the job. And it's just like everything is going through the motion because we're moving into a time of incredible uncertainty and everybody is fed up and COVID didn't help that feeling of being disillusioned. All the promises of capitalism has not materialised. Look at the Chelsea owner, just lost everything in this land. The times are changing. And this king decides to give up his responsibility to take the lead. Now Mordecai came before the king. And one day, brothers and sisters, we also... We'll come, we, we, we will also come before capitals, the king. king. We will all come before the king one day at the judgment of all the nations. Now, there are many people that would rather choose to reject and forget that concept, but the fact is, just because we don't believe it, and just because we don't think about it, and just because it's not something we want to associate with, mm. the truth is mm. that accountability day is coming. Mm. One day there will be a day of reckoning when everything that we have ever done that's recorded in that book will be revealed to us. And we will see it, and we will see ourselves, and we will see each other before God as we really are. And everything will be evaluated. And the, the, the technical word for that, the theological word for that, uh, is eschatology. The study of the end of the age. The reflection of the things uh, to come at the end of that place. When all things are wrapped up and stored nicely away. Now how do I know that this is coming? Because Jesus, in the Bible, tells me so. And how do I know that the Bible is true? <laughs> because I have chosen yeah. to believe yeah. it's true. Amen. 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 Yeah. And brothers and sisters, that is setting our faith yeah. off to work. Yeah. I have chosen to believe. And whether we like it or not, until we see him face to face on that special day, that's all we've got. Mm -hmm. That we choose to believe the revelation of the truth revealed. Mm -hmm. And the Bible pens us the opportunity to see the words and insight into God. And there's no magic solution and there's no capacity to convince. Oh, there are many people who are very good at apologetics and presentations of truth far greater than I. But that ultimately isn't going to convince. In order for you to get on this journey with God, you need faith. And when you strip faith down, all you've got is your choice to choose, to believe that what is being presented is true. And there is nothing out there that's going to help you accept that factor. There comes a point when a man or a woman has to choose. And that's the whole point of the gospel. That God has given us an invitation to make a decision to believe in. And we choose whether we will believe in the God who has presented us with these truths or not. I have chosen to believe and set my faith off to work. What about you? Have you set your faith off to work? Or are you into Sheilaism? <coughs> You've heard of Sheilaism, haven't you? No. How many people live in the world? How many billion? Eight billion. Eight billion people, thank you. So, Sheilaism basically is the right way according to Sheila. 
the right way according to Sheila. So whatever Sheila says is true. So Sheilaism, then, is what Sheila thinks. Now you may not think what Sheila thinks, but that doesn't matter because Sheila thinks it. So as long as Sheila thinks it, it's all right. And if there's 8 billion people in this world, then there's 8 billion isms. The rules, the law, the way according to you. But I want to come before you today in humility and say to you that what we think is irrelevant. It's what he has said. That's right. That's right. So the fact that you think it or feel it or want it or do it or, is irrelevant. Yeah. He has said it, so that's it. Yeah. Now, you don't have to believe that, and that's fine. But the Bible has penned us the opportunity to see it. Now, if we don't want to see it, we can choose to reject it. But the Bible has penned us the opportunity to believe it and invites us to believe it. And if we believe it, then we can benefit from the blessings that it brings to us. And so when the Bible talks about there's a judgment that's coming, and it does, actually, the word judgment is recorded 254 times in the New American Standard Version. <laughs> and that makes it 74 times in the New Testament and 180 times in the Old Testament. The representation of the word judgment. Now, it defers it to all sorts of judgments, judgments, but there's a whole range of revelations as it relates to the eschatological events that are going to take place one day. Mm. Now that's not bad for a barrel boy. Is wow. It? <laughs> that's it. That's all done. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, my teachers could see me now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So well. The ring that King Ahasuerus gave to Haman, the abuser of the king's power and authority, he gave to Mordecai because Haman had abused the king's trust in him. The man, Mordecai, who could be trusted with the king's power and authority. Now, brothers and sisters, this representation of revelation in Esther, this conflict is like a rehearsal of when God, the king, takes from the evil one, Satan, the one who stole from Adam by deception, and hands it to Jesus, the Holy One, the Anointed One. So this scenario that the king takes off of Haman and gives to Mordecai is like when God takes from Satan the right to rule the earth and deceive the hearts of men and gives that authority and power, the, reign, the right to reign, to Jesus, the worthy one. The one who paid the debt he did not owe, the price we could not pay. Yeah. Jesus paid for the right to reign in our lives, if we put our trust in him. He's paid for it anyway. But we can reclaim back our lives that's been stolen when we put our trust in Jesus who has paid the price. A price that we could not pay. Jesus has paid for the right to reign in your life. It is God who sent Jesus, sets Jesus over all enemies of good. So if you're being invaded with bad, then you're being manipulated by an enemy that you need not be manipulated by. Because in Jesus, all enemies will flee. Jesus said in Luke, I've come to set captives free. And all enemies of good, God, have been defeated 
in Jesus. The king took from Haman, Satan, and gave it to Mordecai, Jesus. Why? Because he is the only one worthy. Jesus can be trusted with your life. God trusts Jesus to take care of everything that's precious to him. Why is Esther in the Bible? Anti-Semitism Semitism is demonic. That's no other word for it. And the attack on the Jews is a constant thing. So I mentioned that last week. Satan is determined to wipe out the Jews. If you want to wipe out the Jews, brothers and sisters, all you have to do to wipe out the Jews is to destroy the God of Israel. That's all you have to do. <laughs> and then once you've wiped out the God of Israel, then you can destroy the Jews. Good luck on that. <laughs> because it's God who takes care of his people. And as Christians, we have been grafted in. So we are his people. Yeah. Which means that God, what? Takes care of who? Oh, he takes care of us. Mm -hmm. If we trust him. Because we only get into this thing and stay connected to this thing and walk with this thing by faith. By faith. Because it can be true, but if you don't believe it, you won't benefit from it. Because there are many people who are going to be judged and go to hell who didn't believe that Jesus is the Saviour. And therefore, they die a sinner and will stand before him and be judged accordingly. So Haman is the enemy of the Jews. Satan attempts to sabotage God's plans to annihilate the Jewish nation and has been doing so for a long time. To stop the Saviour coming from the Jews. It was Esther who set Mordecai over the household of Haman. So he, Haman, had everything that belonged to his enemy was now given to him, was now given to Mordecai. In Jesus, God has taken back what Satan has stolen from Adam. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God has taken back from Satan everything that was stolen from Adam? Or do you think Satan has the power to compete against God. One day, they will look and wonder as to how he, that Satan, was able to do so much harm to humanity. They will look and wonder, how did he deceive the nations? So Esther spoke again to the king. She seems to be getting the hang of this, speaking to the king last. She fell at his feet and she wept. And I asked, what is the difference between crying and weeping? And the dictionary gives us an interesting sort of thing and it basically says, just a different way of saying it. But I actually think, this is me, not Jesus. <laughs> Did someone else say that? <laughs> this is me, I think, that to cry is to leak water from the soul. But to weep is to leak water from the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. The prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. And when we cry out to God in travail, when we cry out to God for the need, for the nations, for our lives, for the lost, it's different from mm -hmm. crying from our soul. She was pleading for a kingly intervention. Do we know any kings? To protect her and her people. The king extends his golden scepter to Esther to, write, to rise and to make a request to the king. And God says to us every day, come to me, 
all you who are weary burden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am humble and gentle, and you will find rest. For your souls come to me, Jesus says. She wants him to revoke the letters that consent to destroying the Jews. She reasons. She puts forward her arguments. The king is intrigued. She declares to him as to how, how could she sit back and watch the nations go in to annihilation? And I ask the question in Jesus' name, how come the church has allowed the gospel to become a subsidiary to the revelation of his existence. Where are the evangelists proclaiming? Where are the Christians amongst the God's people in this land and across the world? Why have we kept silent when they pile into the judgment queue? She declares to him as to how, why, how could she sit back and watch her people go into annihilation. She asks him to reevaluate. You see it again. Abraham, Moses, just bartering with God. She asks him to reevaluate. And God is asking us to cry out for the nations that he might reevaluate, that he might, he might move his hand of mercy and bless him and open the eyes of the lost. The king gives her his authority to act and appropriate to protect her people in the king's name. And as a child of God, we are protected from our enemies in the name of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That God has given us the name Jesus to protect us in every possible way. In your darkest moments, learn to say Jesus. And in your joyous days, learn to say Jesus. It's Jesus all day long, all day long, all day long. Now there's a problem, a conflict of interests. A conflict of interests. The law of the Medes and the Persians cannot revoke as Daniel found out in Daniel 6.22 when he ended up at the lion's dinner, nearly. <laughs> so another way has to be found to resolve the conflict of interest. And the same conflict of interest exists with God and his holy laws. The law says the guilty have to be punished. The wages of sin in Romans 6 verse 23, the wages of sin is death. God's free gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Someone has to pay the price for the sins committed by human beings against God and his laws. Only through death can redemption come. And that only as an innocent man who is God dies and his blood shed. Now how do I know it's true? Because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> it's a song. God's free <laughs> gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus paid the redemption fee to set the captives free. Free from eternal separation from him. Like with Esther, God made another way to deal with his broken laws other than judgment by providing Jesus as Saviour. The revelation of the law drew a line when Moses brought it. But that line was crossed. And so the cross provides another way to deal with the sinfulness of man. 
that was taking us all away into judgment, guilty. Now the letter went out ASAP and 127 provinces received the declarations that were provided. And the plan was to, to protect the Jews from this annihilation. On that first fast approaching day, the dreaded day, the 13th of the 12th month of Ada, sometime in March, I believe, this time of joy on the 14th is the climax of Ada that they celebrate now because of the deliverance then. And the empire of the Medes and the Persians was a big empire, 127 provinces, it went from India to Egypt. The plan was that the Jews could pick up weapons and fight against their oncoming enemies. That is, those who would take up the sword against them as an aggressor. The consent was given for just one day, but it actually extended to another day. And everyone, everywhere, knew because the message was sent out in haste using the king's postal service, his horses. And even in the citadel in Susa, where they banqueted early on in the chapters. They heard the revelation of these declarations. And having been given authority, power and provision, Mordecai is clothed in purple and royal attire. He's made a prime minister, the advisor to the king. He was given a crown to wear and Susa, rejoiced and shouted. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7, there is a time to shout as well. And you've heard the guy shouting John, haven't you? No? <laughs> so go and have a listen to it. It's a song on the internet, Shouting John. And it's uh, an African chap and he can't stop shouting. Mm. And so he goes to church and he just keeps shouting, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the deacons, they don't like it. They think he shouts too much. So they try to stop him from shouting. And so they put him out of the church. They said, you can't come to church anymore because you shout too much. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And he says, I can't stop shouting. Not one time I've been to the courthouse. Not one time I've been to the cemetery. Not one time have I not eaten. And he starts developing this song. It's a great song. If you want to get encouraged, <laughs> just be blessed with this song. Shouting John on the internet. I'll get no royalties. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time to shout. Among the Jews, there was lightheartedness, joy, gladness and honour as they anticipated the victories that were about to come. They had a holiday and a feast and a celebration and a banquet. And there will be a celebration and a banquet in heaven when we get there on that precious day. It became fashionable among the provinces to convert to and become Jews, to sojourn with the nation. And the dread of the Jews fell upon the people. Daniel and Esther are dealing with the exiled people. Brothers and sisters, the Jews were nearly wiped out. And had it not been for the insomnia of a king and the courage of a young girl, they would have been. They would have been. But God protects, and he protects because salvation comes from the Jews. God is the hidden actor in this story. And even though God's name is not actually mentioned one time, you can see this, the, 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 the thumbprint of God all the way through the scripture. But actually, even though the name God is not mentioned one time, it's actually mentioned five times. 
And uh, I've always loved David Paulson as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And David says these things, and uh, I quote. And so there's this, this concept called um, acrostics. Some of you may have heard of it. And it's basically, in Esther, you can find it in 120, 54, 513, 77, and 75. Where you can take the first letter across the number of the lines up and across the sentence. And you can see the name of God, and you'll spell out in those verses, J-H-U-H, -H, Lord, in English. When it's backwards, it's spoken by the Gentiles. When it's forward, it's spoken by the Jews. In Psalm 119, we can see it filled with acrostics. Proverbs 31, the ideal wife. Always oh, good to look for one of them. Mm -hmm. Lamentations has an alphabetic acrostics. Each line represents different letters. And four out of five chapters have them in it. Acrostics can be used to convey coded messages. And like the Christian, when they were persecuted and they went to the caves, you've seen the sign Ichthus. If you wanted to, if you was a Christian and you wanted to kind of see whether or not someone else was a Christian, Christian, you would do this line. And if they were a Christian, they would come back and they would do this line underneath it and cross it and it would look like a fish. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's called uh, Ichthus. And yesterday I was, saw on the sticker of a car, the sign of the fish. Mm -hmm. And then in it, it was it wrote Darwin's theory. Yeah. <laughs> See that one. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, a simulation is to become that which you're a part of. To merge the reality of your identity into society as if you are part of what's already there. And the Jewish nation were very good at doing that, which is one of the reasons why they survived. But there is a danger as Judas Maccabees and his family discovered, are becoming so engaged with society, so maligned with society, that you barely hardly tell the difference between those who are and those who aren't. And as are we as Christians in these days in danger of becoming assimilated to the society that we live in? And what will protect us from assimilation? And how can we recover from assimilation? Well, come say. Wow. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I was just thinking it's a good job my name's not John, because I feel like shouting. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be shouting Rob. So <laughs> I'll leave that to shouting John. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for, 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 as you said, breaking open, digging down into God's word and to just exposing so many wonderful truths to us of what this Bible says. And I choose to believe too, Lord. I choose to believe your word. And uh, I, as Paul was speaking, I... I, I, I I think we heard a lot about time. I heard about time and, and Paul mentioned Ecclesiastes and I just, as he was speaking, I just thought I'm going to read um, from Ecclesiastes 3 because the word is better than anything I've got to say really. That there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Yeah. There's a time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate, and a time for war, and a time for peace. Lord, there's nothing 
in our lives that you haven't got time for. And we thank you for your precious son, for, for, for sending Jesus so that we have a way back to a relationship with you. We've heard of Haman today of representing Satan and Mordecai um, representing Jesus. So Father, we just thank you that we can choose to follow you. We can choose to believe you. We can choose to believe this Bible. And when we do that, we can, we can just have uh, an incredible relationship with a wonderful God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.